The brand new GE head from Head Games is a CNC ported head and it's gonna go on Mike from MPH Fabrications up in New Hampshire. It's gonna go on his six second Corolla, I think it is. And this thing already had a Head Games head, but now he's gonna get a new CNC head and we are gonna rock it. I'm gonna show you the whole thing. We're gonna to go to the race, keep watching. All right, so we got the head back from CNC and it is go time because World Cup is next week and we have to get guides, valve job, all that stuff in three days. Uh, it's a little crazy, but anyway, the head looks great. I'm gonna show you the ports in a little bit. We gotta get this thing rolling. Matt just did his thing, blending in the CNC. Now we're gonna do guides, valve job. It's go time. Now we've been doing 2JZ since 2003 and we have tried different materials. We tried different stem diameters, we uh, up to seven millimeter. We tried Pyramet, which is a different grade of Inconel that you can't even buy commercially. Um, and we have found that the six and a half millimeter valve from GSC actually has lasted the longest in these high temperature situations. As I said, we're gonna run a lot of boost, 100 pounds of boost and some nitrous. We really need the best material and we need the stem diameter. Standard valves just won't work. We're probably gonna go back over the parts uh, later on in the video, but just wanna show you this is the valve we're choosing. We choose the GSC six and a half millimeter stem. As you can see here, it next down to six millimeters, so you can use the factory lock style. And we do this for strength. Now this car is gonna see 80 to 100 pounds of boost. It's gonna have nitrous, and we really need all of the stem diameter we can get. The intake side, for comparison is a six millimeter to the six and a half. You can see how much more beefy this is. All right, guides are in, and I know I didn't show you guys that, but I said we gotta keep this thing rolling very quickly. Matt is making room for cams, and we're gonna do valve job. Valve job is a very important thing. It's actually one of the most important things of all the cylinder head. So if you get the valve job wrong, the head just doesn't work. You're not gonna get it back. Now, thankfully, we have 20 years of experience in the 2JZ and we have lots of flow bench testing and we know which valve job works. As you can see here, you can see here, now this is actually a custom uh, cutter, but we have lots and lots and lots of cutters. You can see they're all shaped differently and there's different angles to them. So a valve job is not just a valve job. There's actually a lot to that and it's angles and it's widths and you really, you have to get it right. By right, I mean testing on this thing. Putting a cylinder head on the flow bench, especially for valve jobs, and we do a lot of because you can actually hurt the head, you can hurt CFM by just putting any valve job on it. You can also pick up. 30 to 40 CFM is a typical number that we will see from just a valve job. Nothing else done to the head. That's what you wanna see. Here Matt is putting in the valve job. Now you can see the angles are changing, the widths are changing. Everything changes when you do the correct valve job. We're not just putting anything on there. This thing is getting a plus one valve. Uh, we're making a lot, a lot of power. And so everything needs to be nicey nice. One thing to note is that when we digitize the head, we did it for a stock size valve. So what he's gonna have to do is once he valve chops it, we're gonna have to open up the throat. We're gonna have to blend the throat diameter in because now we're doing a plus one valve. What Matt is doing here is we're gonna use some R2M GSC cams and the lobe would hit the head normally. So we have to clearance the head for the camshaft lobe. Mike uses a stock size stud. And when you're making this kind of power and you have this much boost, obviously you need some clamping force. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use this, it's like a T-washer from ARP. The reason why a lot of people use this is because the washer will dig into the cylinder head when you're using a lot of boost. Actually, we see that in street cars all the time. So what we do is we made it so we use the half inch size outer diameter 
uh, nut and it goes on the factory 7 16 stud and you can see it takes up the entire circumference of the washer so now this is dissipating all of the pressure across the whole washer now when you put the washer in check this out all right so this washer goes inside here now we do not press fit these in i know a lot of guys do but it just makes servicing them a real pain in the ass so and i'm not about being a pain in the ass i like easy stuff and really it just needs to be machined like you see on this one here so this area here needs to be machined and then you go all the way down you see here see how this area here is machined for the end of the washer so it actually goes against that ledge and once it goes against that ledge it's going to hold the washer in place and it won't dig into the cylinder head and this whole setup has been proven many times to hold a six second car together just fine All right, guys, I know I sh promised you I would show you these. Check out the new head game CNC GE head. I think this thing's a work of art. The guys really knocked it out of the part digitizing it. I'm so, so happy. Only thing is the chamber didn't really clean up. So you'll see here that the chamber is not completed and uh, that's okay, we'll have to blend it in. We'll just change the program on the next one. We'll drop the chamber 10 thousandths and then this will all clean up. Because it's the first one, sometimes you get to make some changes. The intake port also came out freaking amazing. Almost all of it cleaned up. Uh, we only had to touch it up a little bit. We put bronze guides in it. I know I'm showing you late in the process, but man, this thing looks good. I'm so happy the way it turned out. And it even picked up, see my little fin there? Fins on both sides. One thing that I have not mentioned is, if you notice, there is no more water jackets. We weld the water jackets on the race car stuff because when you're making that kind of power and you're going 200 miles an hour, the last thing you wanna do if you blow a head gasket or the head lifts is water to go underneath the tire. So we weld them all up and everything is good to go. So the last stop on the journey here is check spring height now uh, we're going to use the 5086 spring kit. This spring kit we have uh, been using for years in all the pro cars, and it's just a really bad dude. So it's a GSC 5086 spring kit. It's a conical spring. You're thinking single spring. What can it do? Well, this is the baddest dude you'll ever see. And you see here at 1290 spring height at 450 lift, we're at 140 on the seat and 295 open. We're 77 thousandths away from full volume with a spring rate at 342. And with that, we are 30 pounds more on the seat than almost anything on the market and almost 50 pounds open than anything else you can buy. So it's absolutely ready for 100 PSI or really whatever you're gonna throw at it. This is the same spring that we use on Joel Grass's car, White Rice, uh, you name it, we've used it. So we're back from World Cup and Mike was able to run his personal best. He won a 694 at 204 miles per hour, but he actually broke a whole lot of driveline parts in between all that. So he was in and out of the transmission. He did three transmissions. He did a converter. He did a whole bunch of other parts and, but at least the head stayed together. Everything was good with that. It's always good news when we know our customers run their personal best. We help you achieve your goals and i just can't ask for anything more than that that's it for us today be sure to like subscribe comment below tell me what you want to see toodles